Hello and welcome back to ICS Cyber Talks podcast. And today I have over here Alex from IoT365. This is a follow-up podcast. We are doing uh, follow-ups on uh, startups in Israel that are very interesting for me at least. And I'm sure that uh, you would enjoy it as well. Hello, Alex. Hello, Nachshon. How are you doing? Fine. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Um, Alex, I would let you present yourself. This is something that I decided that I'm not doing anymore. Okay. So it's your work. Thanks. So please uh, do. Alex CEO of IoT365. Uh, actually, that's all. Short, Shortly. And <laughs> Some history. Come on. You are coming from somewhere. You were doing a lot of uh, positions in your uh, career. Yes. Yes. So I finished my last uh, job in Silicon, uh, Nasdaq-based company, 16 years, closing the gap between delivery and IT and IS and cybersecurity. So that's actually the source where I detected that we have a huge problem worldwide to close the gap between OT and IT teams like security. And OT security is very uh, delayed about the solutions worldwide. And uh, till now, before I come to the worldwide uh, solutions in the OT cyber protection world, that's a very, very bad uh, state that you should have uh, detec detection separate uh, solution like IDS and SIM, and somebody needs to close the gaps, some uh, human resources uh, deployment team, and the investigation, once you have some problem and connection to the IT seems that's not actually working perfectly in real time of very fast AI generated cyber attacks. On the top of that, there's a different worlds. So once I detected such huge problems in the area, in the manufacturing, so I, I understood that's no solution all in one existing, like Trend Micro, McAfee, Antivirus, you are installing, everything's okay. So OT world, you cannot install nothing because it's critical infrastructure and you cannot react. In real time, you should only to understand what you should plan and how the best uh, way to, to, to make some uh, continuous... So, so you jump already to the cold water, but let's start with reminding everybody about your solution and from there we would go over all the changes that you made in the last six months which is phenomenal for me yes uh, absolutely. so what is the solution what is iot 365 so okay generally speaking i built my solution uh, to be uh, very fast and transparent for deployment and detection so that's two processes that should be all in one platform that's how I imagined that before I started my startup. And uh, what, what we succeed to do and to deploy in few worlds, in few uh, countries now. So uh, we succeed uh, to uh, actually to have some uh, unique uh, deployment sensor, smart sensor that's not dependent on hardware. So we are working with uh, some containers with new uh, uh, software uh, uh, tools. And uh, we are able to support ARM, uh, x86 uh, uh, platform as well. And that's plug and play, that's two ports. So you are only connecting to OT switch and you are actually only uh, uh, getting the traffic, okay? Without connecting to the operation technology, without disturb them. And the second port, the separate port in our sensor, that's uh, coming with encrypted traffic and actually uh, uploading that to our instance in the Azure, AWS, private cloud, or even we can do deployment in the physical infrastructure for few sectors per requirements. But actually, I can define that we are first worldwide software as a service platform, uh, delivered uh, all in one solution, fast deployment. In one day, you can see the traffic, and in two days, you can uh, learn uh, your traffic by machine learning integration uh, with the NVIDIA Morpheus DFP machine learning model. And uh, what is uh, very, very interesting that in the end of the story, when we are detecting the threats, we have AI generated playbooks. So by pressing button, you can 
get exact uh, NIST 2 standard playbook, what you should do, what you suspect to do regarding the detected threat. So nobody did that before. So we have all-in-one solution, including detection, in deployment, and response. And our SIM that's integrated, OT SIM, that's now to provide and to close the gap between cyber protection, cyber security team, SOC team, and operation technology guys. It's not interesting to get all the data from the regular SIM regarding uh, DDoS attack, thousand events. So they're ignoring that. They're absolutely ignoring that. So in our SIM, we have a module for IDS, for protocols, uh, concentrating very, very strong on the real-time threat detection. And uh, actually, I can say that uh, that's working very good. And I can say that now we are in the good problem that we are increasing our team very, very fast because uh, we have potentially a uh, few uh, orders worldwide from uh, LATAM, from United States. And uh, now we are preparing here to provide good uh, capacity and to support uh, all the potential prospects and not to disappoint any company worldwide. So our mission to protect the world from cyber attacks, AI-generated cyber attacks with AI tools. So that's... So you are in the right place in the right time uh, because um, all, all the idea of AI attacks, are it's quite new. Um, actually, we didn't see it yet really in work, but it would come and all of us are sure about it. I would like to go over the models that you have in the system. Okay. Last time we were talking, it was a model that is sitting on the network, on the OT network, and is doing mapping, is doing uh, all uh, um, checking of the traffic and SCADAs. Okay, and of course, it was, if I'm not wrong, it was even on-prem. It wasn't in the cloud. That was both. No, that was in cloud, but uh, we actually concentrated, we started to concentrate on IoT uh, things, and uh, we jumped uh, to the critical infrastructure because the support issue. So handling uh, thousand branches in the United States, you cannot... Uh, yeah. Now, as, as we are talking almost twice a week, and each time that I'm talking with you, I have a new model, yes, uh, which is <laughs> unbelievable. Let's go over them, okay? So you have the sim, you have the ideas. Yes, this is nice. Everybody has that. All in not one. not in one system, but everybody has it. So they are buying two systems. Yes, but that's OT sims that can uh, say that's OT sims that's a difference that we can integrate in the global IT sim. So once uh, people today, generally speaking, about the sim, so they are talking about uh, security incident event management relevant to IT system. Where is the problem with the OT protocol? So they're starting to add Modbus or Profinet or few protocols, but you have much more protocols, and that's a huge problem. So once you're not detecting the protocols and cyber attacks coming into these protocols, so that's critical for for OT guys. So yeah. that's a huge problem. And now we are closing the gap. So that's OT SIM that can be integrated in the global SIM. So actually, that's not only SIM in the system. That's something that's showing your traffic, showing your all messages. So that's a few models. Like I talked before, that's a universal deployment with the, our smart sensors. That's a IDS supporting up to 25 protocols and we are able to add protocols in a few days with our dedicated team for OT protocols. That's uh, researchers that know how to do that. Mm -hmm. That's my point. <laughs> that's why I'm pushing forward with this. And after that, we are going to the SIM to show what's uh, the detected messages. So in our system, you able to see in real time thread detection and all the, uh, packe uh, all the packets transferring into readable message. So you can actually to save that site for half a year, uh, for investigation, for compliance, for uh, investigation uh, also. And uh, we have, at the end of the story, once you have detected incidents, you can play only some button and you are getting a playbook, AI-generated playbook, 
that actually make a, here game changing. Why? Because uh, the clo- close uh, solution, like Dragos Armies, Nozomi, they have some analysis that's, uh, as human resources, so you can send the something that's uh, all the traffic, not all the traffic, all the messages, no? and manually they're trying to investigate it. So we are bringing to the world new effective solution and independently work uh, uh, for the OT guys, OT uh, guys so that's w- sitting So when you're the... saying playbook, the meaning is that you are giving to the user all the instructions to uh, take care of the problem? This is the playbook that you are talking about? Yes. We have actually, as I talk, few stages. First stage is you have uh, raw traffic, okay? We are transferring that to the readable message for our system with unique uh, patent uh, agent list uh, SIM. And after that, we are analyzing that with few models like AI-generated uh, model uh, that's uh, in machine learning with NVIDIA. Uh, if we are not detecting AI generated uh, attack or something like that. And once we are coming to the uh, detected incidents, you are only, firstly, you have a color of the uh, of the severity, like red, uh, blue, or uh, orange. That's something middle. Yeah. And you should only to press the button on the incident. You can see inside what's the type of incident to read it before you're pressing button on the playbook. And you can see the source of cyber attack, like uh, some hacker's machine. You can see the target or PLC or whatever, or SCADA, whatever you have in your OT systems. And once you play, uh, you're pressing the playbook button, so that's coming to our AI-generated engine. And we actually, that's considering all the uh, relevant messages. It's like IP addresses, all the procedure uh, according to these two standards. So we are actually making here some... Uh, Clever uh, my movements that uh, know to show you it's very fast and effectively. So you are cutting here uh, time to go to investigate it, to send to somebody, to wait to somebody, because you should react immediately once you see some incident in your system. And we are also reducing false positives. That's additional, very strong, uh, powerful function that we are reducing with uh, NVIDIA AI uh, movement. So, for example, you have DDoS attack with 1,000 events, 1,000 spins. So, in our system, you can see one spin. So, in the different system, you can check how this <laughs> how this works. <laughs> okay. Now, one of the things that you added to your system since we talked last time was mapping of uh, the infrastructure of the OT. Um, and... Um, the second thing is, if I record right, it's the digital twin. Yes, correct. So let, let's go into that. Well, mapping, it's okay. Mapping, it's uh, reasonable, and I think yes. that, you, that everybody needs that. Yes. Because when you are coming to a new place, usually, and I have it more than once, that nobody really knows what they have. Because if it's a factory of 20 years and the oldest guy is working over there 12 years, there is a gap of eight years of knowledge. So he knows the big parts, you know, the parts that you are taking care of all the time, but still it can be that you have some other connections and things that uh, you don't know about it. So this is okay. Where the digital twin is coming in? A good question. A good question. Actually, uh, you touched some points that uh, I'm uh, actually don't know if that's good for market or not good for market. That's my view. That's innovative view on the uh, cyber protection operation technology industrial control system world. So I'm speaking about uh, delegate the tools to be f- more effectively in the in the operation technology world. Why I'm talking about that? Because the existing solution trying to to do the same things and to compete with each other and at the end of the day providing very similar solutions. Similar complicated architectures that you should have big sensors. Very, very long deployment. Uh, Servers in the middle like side servers uh, gathering the data. After that, you should convert this to the global uh, servers that's uh, in the 
be, best case uh, sitting in the cloud today. Uh, by the way, the uh, big company start, started to, to go where I talked with you uh, in the summer now. Yeah. Drago, so we are in the AWS. So, our, uh, so that's actually my view uh, to have separate solutions. For example, the Inventory assets, that's a long story, okay? Inventory assets, clarity comes, Dragos comes, uh, Aramis comes, uh, uh, Nozomi comes uh, to the to the area and starting to sit there, long process, and they're not covering that 100%, you know that, because sometimes you have uh, encrypted operation system in the some controller that was proceeded uh, 20 years ago. So only to, <laughs> to, to, to decrypt that, that can tell, take... Uh, Years, yeah, and uh, wh- why I'm saying that, and digital digital twins actually answering the the issue with a uh, very very close copy to the cloud, and that's uh, actually provide me very strong uh, sales movement, and to 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 bring the very clear demonstration how things working, how our how our platform works. You don't know, so what I'm showing, I'm showing oil gas digital twins or water desalination uh, digital twins or s- or smart building or whatever and after that we can simulate the cyber attack so we develop cyber attack simulator as well that's additional tools that we develop in a short yeah. period of time and uh, once we are simulating the cyber attacks like what is cyber attacks by modbus pro- protocol or different protocol and we are detecting that in real time in our solution that's making the cells much more effectively and uh, on the top of this, I can actually to uh, copy your on-prem infrastructure to the cloud. And why that's good? Firstly, we can actually demonstrate and uh, raise awareness from the cyber attacks and without touch, without interactive uh, with your critical infrastructure. And you should upgrade uh, some uh, critical devices like PLC, virtual PLC, uh, today Siemens, Hitachi, yeah, and, everybody uh, is starting working starting with the open work. PLC. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So once you are uh, making some uh, no, not good, uh, bad uh, update, so you're not uh, impacting your critical infrastructure in real time. So that's the sense. And we so able to can I take a new firmware and do lab checks in your digital tweet? Not in only mine. That's depending what the uh, what the manufacturing of the uh, uh, of the uh, particular uh, PLC, for example, or different. Uh, Let's component. say that uh, Siemens PLC. Yeah, uh, Siemens uh, nine hundred nine thousand something. Okay, the new, the new, the new, uh, the new, the new serial. Yeah, um, there is a new uh, firmware with uh, that is correcting some vulnerabilities. Okay, and I want to check it before I'm putting it into my system. So I can do that through your system? So that's a, a very, very uh, complicated solution. That's not uh, something that I'm building and I'm ready. So I'm coming from scratch. I'm only providing the ability to build digital twins. So I'm coming to the site and I need to know your architecture and topology. For example, you have 10 OT devices and one PLC controller, all of them uh, almost uh, in a good state, uh, not uh, 30 years before you know that we can actually uh, migrate them to the digital twins and to simulate both protocols, OT protocols that's existing uh, virtually and uh, operation system inside like uh, PLC or SCADA, whatever, and that's supported by the Siemens should support it. Once that's existing, yes, we are upgrading your PLC or whatever device firmware. See that all the traffic is clean. We can simulate the cyber attack and you can see that's before. That's actually before in digital twins. We are getting some threats and we see that's, that's actually making problems. So we yeah. can send some command like... Uh, right coil zero and this can damage your systems yeah, virtually and after firmware update you can see that i cannot write this because it's blocked or it's encrypted or something like that so yes absolutely but that's actually not something like plug and play deployment by the way we developed uh, in the area in the latam uh, fast risk ot uh, 
what a risk assessment, uh, new tool, new service. But it's actually concentrated on real-time threat detection and real-time discovery, network discovery devices. And you can see that's in red points. So sometimes you can see that uh, OT switch actually connected to the regular IT uh, networking and you can see many, many red points. So the owner of the place starting to what is this? What is this? Uh, yes, I want the solutions. I want this permanently, not only one time. But we are not going to discover all the assets in the play because it's taking two times. So I'm concentrating on the fast and real-time threat detection. I am saying that all uh, relevant persons sh must know, even not should, must know what's happening in their critical infrastructure. And we are very far from this worldwide. That's, that's not happening still, but that's starting to move Faster than that was even that than this summer, and after all the wars, it's starting to to work very very aggressively, and we are receiving many many. One of requests. the things that we know is that uh, a lot of uh, companies are buying IDSs. Uh, they are buying a lot of uh, let's say technologies. In the end of the day, no one is looking at that. And I have hundreds of those. You know, they bought it and then you discover that the console is sitting in a closed room and someone is coming one in two weeks and he's looking at that. <laughs> now, I love the idea that it's on the cloud and then it's easier to to go to that the question is and you gave part of the answer by the idea that ai is dissolving a lot of issues but still how do you make it more workable because if i would if i'm looking at the factory the only part that is working 24 by 7 is the manufacturing. And usually there is the control. Those people are not cyber people. Okay? They are guys that, are, that know OT quite well. But for them, it's to make sure that the line is working well, not the cyber. Okay? Exactly. Now, if I would take your screen... Okay, your console. And I would put them as another screen in their wall. What can I give them that they understand that right now there is an issue? Okay, because a lot of issues or a lot of problems, the first step is to understand if it's coming from the operational side or from the cyber side. Okay, a lot of times you would get an alarm and actually it's not cyber. It's something that it's on the operational side. So how you work with that? Okay, that's a great question. That's our differentiation. All from my the, questions are great. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so first of all, I'm uh, detecting, as I told before, uh, widest uh, range of the OT protocols. So first thing, they can see Siemens protocol immediately in the dashboard of protocols. So that's something that you cannot see today in any tool. First of all, secondary, they can see network discovery map immediately, red point, that's unauthorized device, some guys connected from IT, even SOC team, to their factory. They don't want that. That's a very, very big problem. That's Even, you know, some hackers sitting there one month or two months, that's happening, so they can see, detect that it immediately. And the powerful tools, as I told again, I, I told before, and I'm talking about that again, that incident response relevant for operation technology. So they, they, they can see false positive reduction immediately and only pressing button and giving the clear instruction what you should do, what you're supposed to do to protect your OT world. So that's a good portfolio. Can you identify if it's coming from the operational side or from a cyber side? 
Uh, yes, I can I can say that the operation technology guys will see that immediately about the protocols, about the recommendations. That the incident response recommendation dire directed to the NIST uh, to to proto to NIST start uh, for the operation technology team. So on the top of that, they can read uh, the write registry, read registry, coils. They can see specific command that's coming into the traffic that you cannot get this from so IT you're talking traffic. in their language yes i'm talking with ot language to ot guys by ot protocols great ot incident response uh, recommendations one of the things that uh and actually in the last couple of months i, I, I saw it more and more is that after you install systems you have to do a lot of work to reduce the false alarm, the false positive. And as you said before, you're doing that in another way with AI and some other uh, ways. But the question is, let's say it in this way. If I would take right now ideas, doesn't matter what ideas. And I would take a SIM system, okay? And I will let them start working probably to reduce the false alarm and to get it in a good shape. It would take me a couple of hundred of hours. And th this is something that I'm saying for sure. SOC 1 level, yes. You are talking about SOC 1 level in the uh, regular SOC team. IT teams are sitting and trying to investigate that and investing uh, huge uh, resources, human resources there. That's actually our strong point that we are reducing that automatically. So, for example, you can get uh, thousands pings in a few minutes and you can get only one or two uh, detected incidents. So. So if you would get information, let's say that I want to take information from the logs of the windows of the HMI, okay, and to export it to you as a syslog, whatever, okay, and, yeah, and connect even the antivirus, okay, and also give it to you as a syslog, and then what you are gathering together from the system, you know how to process it and to say, well, this one, this one, this one, they are all the same and you would give me only one uh, threat, one alarm. The, 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 Did I understand it well? Yes, I, I understood your question very well and I can say that's a, a, too, that's, that's a complicated answer because generally, yes, absolutely, we did proof of concept and we support even a zero level uh, uh, zero level sensors that's uh, concentrated their uh, syslog operation technology commands in some servers that provide our syslog and we can actually work as input not only syslog json format api format and as i told before we can actually transfer also with syslog but i'm talking uh, very transparency with customer when i'm getting some syslog that's missing data inside so we have some problem okay so i cannot uh, show you that's like i am connecting directly to the mirroring port and get yeah of course traffic. but once you are provide me you are providing me some syslog that's including false positive level noise i am reducing this as well and we have some unique uh, platform our uniqueness is a uh, uh, agile agility so we have agile solution and we have few inputs and we can choose each device what is the source we are actually providing to show the data and to analyze it and to show you on the beautiful screen. So inside we have definitions that even OT guys can choose the, for example, sensors coming from the some uh, servers that's providing this from syslog. So sources server, not our uh, traffic so we have tab tab that's originally traffic like mirroring port yeah, of course and you can uh, add how many devices you want how many syslog you want but we need only to add the ports for example we will come not two ports three ports four ports that's all when you have more input so we come with more ports yeah because when you're talking about sim a regular sim system 
Curador uh, Splunk, okay? The main issue is to give them as much information as I can, to connect them to as much information that I can. Okay, so uh, it would be good to connect them, uh, as I said before, to some kind of EDR, okay, if you have that, um, to get information from the servers, okay, even operating system of the servers, and after that, I don't think that we are going into application because this is already out of the infrastructure. Yes. Okay. Exactly. But if someone is trying to attack my uh, operating system, I would get, this is something that Windows know to say, I have it in my log. Someone is doing a change. And I am sending this change to you. Okay. So, the question is, if really you can have a um, lot of sources, like I have in, in, in a sim right now. Okay, Curator, I can connect a lot of sources, and he would give me, uh, let's say, a magnified picture. Is it working in your size as well? I can say uh, that uh, we are working and concentrating on operation technology sector and we are good there. And I must say that we must check our solution in big uh, infrastructure with thousand devices like computers, Windows, Linux, operation systems. That's a different story. So Yeah, but every OT has his own IT. Yes, but once we are talking about close OT environment and you have... Uh, for example, 10 uh, workstations that we are able to do that. So we see that we can uh, analyze these logs, everything. When we are talking about 1,000 devices, it's uh, like Windows, it's something not a real uh, no, story. Uh, uh, I don't think that so we are talking, talking about, about proportion, so many. About proportion and real production, yes, absolutely, we are supporting that. We are not going to say you that you have Windows 10 or Windows 11. That's not a story. But we can see that somebody connected with Windows uh, somebody trying to attack even encrypted cyber attacks we did here in uh, some lab here in Israel. It's <laughs> not so popular yeah. to say. But uh, yes, in even encrypted cyber attacks on the uh, some uh, devices, it's IT devices. Absolutely, we are detecting that. But again, that's not concentrating to be in the IT infrastructure. That's not our mission. We are very, very focusing and that, by the way, my philosophy to be focusing, to be the best in the specific area and not to, to run on the, all the <laughs> scenarios and the, all the sectors. So, so I'm concentrating on the real-time threat detection, operation technology, industrial control system, IoT devices as well. So that's a specific traffic, the specific behavior. And absolutely, yes, yes. And uh, once we have even much more devices, we can actually convert this to syslog with some server and to get the direct data from the server, like separate uh, input and to work with this. So we have solutions, but... Uh, so I would say it what you didn't say, okay? You were tested in the Israeli National Cyber Lab uh, with... Very complex attacks, okay? And I heard it from you, and I heard it from them, okay? And you got um, a very high score. You find you find everything, even if it was very complex and it was some kind of a lot of attacks, different attacks that came in one time. And and they were, I can tell you from their side, they were very impressed. Now, let's go and talk about enterprises, okay? Because enterprise, it's not one factory. It's one factory here, another one in the Netherlands, another one in the UK, another one in the US, and another one in Latin. Now, this is an issue because you have two ways of dealing with that. One way, it's for each one 
to work by himself. Okay? And the other way, it's to get one sock that would see all of them. Now, are you prepared for that? Can you give it? So, if I have two factories that are working with the same um, IPs, okay, the same addresses, one in Latin, one in uh, Israel, and you will get this information. Can you separate? Can, can you say this is coming from here, this is coming from here? Uh, yes, I can say yes, absolutely. And uh, we have uh, uh, something uh, uh, now uh, to uh, to sign with some SOC team because I am not, uh, again, concentrating to build SOC team. So yeah, of course. No, but, but, but I'm talking about you all giving uh, tools for a SOC. Exactly. And we can actually build now, once you are uh, buying, we have also actually even a channel, uh, channel in our sales uh, prospect that once you are MSSP and you're purchasing thousand uh, licenses, so you are getting centralized management tool for free and digital twin for free to to show, to demonstrate the solution. Why I'm talking about that exactly... You should do it the, the other way around. Take money for this and give the other thing for free. But okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. But uh, what can I say is that uh, we, are, we are very strong and powerful in the, our distribution system. That's our philosophy, that's our architecture. So we flat SaaS solution, so you can deploy our sensor worldwide, and we are supporting up to 10 million events per second. That's nobody provides such a thing. That's the exact point of and problem of overloading the regular SIMs that's starting to fail on 20 events per second, uh, 20,000 tw 20, 20, events per second. So by knowing from which collector or... Uh, uh, which um, sensor of yours that is coming to the sim, you know to say from where it came. Yes, because the, uh, because uh, uh, let's uh, let's speak about the simple uh, architecture. You have two two ports. One port that's mirroring port that's connecting to your OT switch, so all the data all the data ca come to me. But one port that's a different port, so I'm detecting that's a different source. Yeah, and that's coming direct to my head. So. Like you are eating something, you know, salads with pizza or something like that. So I know that I'm getting the data from the different sources, and that should be ten so sources, uh, hundred sources, as depending. Okay, but you can provide it, and I'm bringing that to the SOC team at the end of the day, and I can actually package that into the beautiful centralized management. So you are pressing only the sites, and you can see everything. I can tell you that. Um I, I wouldn't go into the name of the customer, but I was working with a customer that had about 25,000 uh, assets in the OT I'm talking, which can be RTUs, it can be PLC, it can be HMI, but it's enormous and and also is very uh, wide um install installed okay all over and they were putting the, um an ids okay on the top so like if i have uh a site that is connected to a control connected to another control and only that connected to the center they put the ids in the center and what we got was a total mess. A total mess, because it might be that in different geographic location, we had the same addresses, the same IP addresses, and the system couldn't understand if it's coming from the south or from the north or from where it's coming. And, and this is an issue that I saw with my own eyes, okay? You know, you're opening the map and you see... Blah, 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 blah. Now, I believe that with the way that you're working, by putting 
in every junction. Exactly. Every switch, every operation technology switch, once you want to get the full puzzle, you should uh, deploy our solution. That's the reason that we investigated it very deep before starting to go to the <laughs> this space, and we developed very small sensors. That's unique. Okay, so you can deploy this very fast. So you're coming to all the switches. And you can send that by the package. Today I have QR code. You are reading QR code. Only read the, you have uh, some internet, separate yeah. separate networking, put diode, even unidirectional, encryption inside, and uh, one port to go to the mirroring port to Actually, to define that's correctly, that's all requ- that's all requirements. So you need only power, you know. <laughs> <to> <laughs> so that's uh, very, very uh, effectively. So, okay. Now, let's go to my biggest concern. My biggest concern. It's called the cloud. Okay. It's not because I don't love a cloud. I love the cloud very much. I had two startups that were dealing with the cloud, so it's fine. But the traditional thinking right now, probably it would change with time, it's changing with the industry 4.0 and everything, is that the cloud is enemy to the OT. And now there is a nice guy, which is called Alex, and he's coming and saying, okay, I'm in the cloud. Now, to get the information, I'm sending your information to the cloud. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about security. Let's talk about if we have over here anything to concern, to really concern, or this is something I'm sure that you were thinking about it. I'm sure that you were taking care of things, but let's understand how you protect me as a customer from my, a, a leak of... Uh, this uh, transformation no man in the middle uh, copy of uh, addresses there is a lot of them yes excellent question and I can explain a little bit more to understand why we are very very safe about this issue so I will speak about the vulnerabilities in our solution potential vulnerabilities and to speak about worst cases I am actually regular to work decades, I'm speaking t- always about the worst case and how to, to resolve and what is the worst case. So let's start from operation technology, critical infrastructure. That's actually, I'm not touching there. I even have ISO standard speaking about cybersecurity. Okay, I'm not uh, touching OT. So at all. At okay. all. So that's only mirroring, put diode before before give, providing me with data, okay? This port is actually okay because we cannot do nothing with it even without IP. That's yeah, only, of course. That's only getting the data. Here we are okay. The second port that we are starting to talk about the transition, the data. So here we have uh, actually very good uh, algorithm insights that now we are deploying in our solution. Before that was VPN and now we are start, stopped and uh, we encrypted that before sending to the AWS. Why is that? Because we want to make this only one direction, only uploading. Only uploading to the cloud, only AWS. Well, the VPN, you need two legs. You need yes, the... VPN, I need uh, dialing, and dialing yeah. that's making problems. So I'm actually encrypting the, your data. So from your factory that's coming with encrypted mode, and even more of them, uh, we started to work with the big MSSP, we signed with them, and they required what is type of the encryption. So that should be certified encryption by uh, DOD. So, yeah, of course. You know, so that's not something open source or something like that. So that's certified encryption, that's uh, critical infrastructure regularly working with this. And after we are encrypting that, we are coming to the AWS and decrypting the data and uh, inserting it in our engine again in our head. So you are full protected. In the worst case, even when somebody somehow uh, cracking your device, for okay. example, so they cannot come to your pro- to your OT uh, environment. environment and they, 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 they should uh, 
hugs the, all the encrypted data. So that's something that's even uh, I can say the on-prem solution is much easier to crack. So you were thinking about everything, almost. I'm everything. trying. I can say you that I'm the uh, gap closer in in the company. So I'm uh, I'm going to the deployments. I like to go to deployments at customer site. Why? Because I want to see how technical feels in the shed, in the in the area, and uh, I'm improving. I had some deployments that something uh, didn't work good. So now that's bringing me the uh, you know the uh, the reason to to improve something to make. To make the uh, behavior in IoT 365 very comfortable for my employees, so I don't want to to, to make difficult and uh, complicated uh, life to my employees. So employees should uh, enjoy in our company. They're coming to work with the innovative solutions and not to deal with something that doesn't work. So my vision is when your employees enjoy in all the sectors, so your customers will enjoy also. And my uh, position to to come to all the areas in my company, to be uh, to sit on the on the share, share a little bit of each employees to understand how how he feels daily, to improve not only the our internal uh, team and uh, uh, atmosphere, and also to improve the delivery to the customers and support the customers. So that's all in one. So that's my vision on the organizations. Uh, regarding uh, the idea of support, so um, you're supporting 24 by 7? Yes, we can provide it for the money. No problem. We have such a services. Now we are raising our SOC team. Is my partner in the LATAM. We have already signed a SOC team also in LATAM, but uh, actually we have uh, support worldwide, like you said. Let's give his name so he would be happy when he hear this uh, podcast. We are talking about Joe. Yes, yes, yes. We wouldn't go into his prior his uh, last name, yes. but for him, here is a smile yes. on the face. Yes, very strong partner, reliable friend, very, very... I want to 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 know what you understand from your POCs because you made quite a couple of POCs already on site with real equipment and I know that some of them you find magnificent things like you know the customer was in shock because he was sure that he is in a in another place yes. so tell us about it yes without names of course Okay, so uh, we touch on the uh, uh, critical infrastructure, uh, oil, gas, uh, pharma, packaging, uh, manufacturing. Now we are talking about big MSSPs that uh, we come to the uh, lab. And uh, uh, the last deployment we did in the France, in the one, uh, one of the biggest uh, aging uh, manufacturing in the Europe with some uh, person, so that was targeted. So we started with his uh, personal lab. So that was uh, amazing because the last deployment I did not for know my uh, innovative solution, how that works. I wanted to check delivery without without arriving because it was end of the year and I want this solution at my lab as it was first deployment in Europe Union. And I know that Europe Union must be compliant till October 24. So I'm seeing potential there and I'm actually planning to open R&D center in, in the Germany and to cover all the European Union, to have some hubs there, like we have, by the way, hub in Miami, manufacturing mm -hmm. that's working with the LATAM and working with the United States. So I'm thinking about the support. That's my weak point because <laughs> it's costly to my pockets. But yeah, of course. I believe that that must be done before we are going forward to the customer. So in European Union, that was amazing because we actually uh, sent from Amazon some device you know, full empty. Ask some guys that I know from Germany that's uh, our employees that uh, actually uh, configured, uh, they pre-configured the sensor, sends it to the our integrator in uh, France. And in one day, when once he connected the sensor and defined that we asked him to define, he sees the traffic, everything. So that was amazing. So I didn't, uh, you know, I did everything from my home. 
only management. <laughs> so that's amazing. And sometimes you come in one of the deployments that I come and that was some issue with connection. So I recognize that we should make some encryption inside, for example, and to improve our solution. So I stopped deployments at all customer sites. I stopped because some guys now pushing me forward, I even delayed my trip to United States. Yeah, in I know. I want to change that because I don't want the technical guys or somebody will feel not so comfortable because the solution working very well. But once you don't connect uh, fast and effectively, that's something not so... So I regular, I started with a good place and I started with the first POC successful. So, so that was very, as you know, like uh, in the sport. Yeah, it's giving a lot of power and a lot of, yes. uh, you know, drive to go on. So I get I, I get good reference and now once I'm feeling that we have some delay, that's not coming in 20 minutes, that's coming in two, three hours. So I'm, I'm trying to understand how to improve that. So that's my vision to have fast deployment. That's some joke because uh, I'm now trying to send, I started to send to all the LinkedIn messages that we can do the fast auto risk assessment in half hour. Nobody come to me because that's... Yeah, it's a, it sounds a bit fishy. That's yeah. like, uh, yes, yeah, it's so... <laughs> So good, so it's not true, you know. Yeah. And after that, I changed it to three weeks. Why one week you are actually deploying my tab, speaking with me how to deploy, how not deploy, how to to open the box. The yeah. next uh, the next week we are explaining what we can uh, explain, what we detected, and third week we are we are speaking about the strategy, how to make deployment in all the sites or yeah. how to deploy the and to cover all the devices. But actually, that's funny. That's a uh, a board is not uh, ready for the fast solution. So they're regular to have uh, three months, half year deployment, and that's happening. You need to remember that we are dealing with OT. Yes. We're dealing with OT guys. Everything should go step by step to make sure that everything is working well. You know, that the, the fast solutions are... Uh, they're uh, afraid from that. Yeah, but it's okay. Alex, we came to the end. So, before we say goodbye, um, where they can find you? If someone is listening right now to this podcast and say, well, this is interesting, how we can uh, come to you? Okay, so we have our website. We have a message to sales IoT 365. That's the best way. <laughs> so it's IoT365? Yes, IoT365.io. That's our website. I'm uh, actually existing in the LinkedIn, so that's very easy to come <laughs> to me. I'm trying uh, to answer to all the messages on the LinkedIn. Sometimes that's now can take one day not one hour that was at the start of my career. So I'm not jumping now on all the, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say, but somebody called me now and I'm afraid that don't ask me to, to deploy this now. <laughs> Give me the time to build the team. So Look, you are a startup <laughs> and I believe that you're doing a tremendous work uh, since you started and especially in the last six months. Um, you know, I love startups. This is the reason that you are over here. And um, I have two startups that I'm, um, let's say, um, I'm combining them uh, because I really love the people. I love the solution. You are one of them. The other one is Salvador. And I can hope only for you that you would raise the needed money as Salvador was doing, Hamsa. And uh, I, I think uh, you're on the right way. I really think so. And as much you would go on, I'm sure that you would find more things that you need to take care. But right now, if I'm looking about a system, which is really 365, okay? Probably it's the only solution that I know that is coming from uh, one box. 
Yes. And probably with less deployment than starting working with some uh, components, even if they have API between them, still it's a lot of work. Alex, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nachron. Thank you. Thank you for your podcast. Welcome. Welcome.